We are continuing on with chapter 17 called Alliances, where the kids are working together to stand up against Mrs. Hyatt's orders. They were in math class last time, and Dave and Lindsay actually worked together to defy the teacher and tell her how they did their math homework without actually using more than three words. Let's see what happens in the other classes. Chapter 17, part two. Uh oh, I don't know where I'm going to end. Hang on a second. Okay, I'm back. I had to make sure I knew where I was ending the second part of our chapter because this is such a big chapter, I have to split it into three parts. Okay, and what was happening in the other first period classrooms on Wednesday? Classrooms where Lindsay and Dave were not on hand to provide some leadership. As science class began, Mrs. Marlowe had already decided to make an example of the first kid who gave her a three-word answer, and it happened to be Kyle. I asked you to tell me about the order Lepi Lepidoptera, the teacher said. Kyle nodded. Moths and butterflies, he repeated. And that's all you know, she said. He nodded again, pretty much, which got a giggle from the class. Mrs. Marlowe grabbed a notepad and picked up a pencil, reading out loud as she wrote, Dear Mrs. Hyatt, Kyle has refused to obey your instructions. He is not participating in class discussion, and he... Kyle raised his hand. Mrs. Marlowe snapped, What? I'm participating. No, you're deliberately using as few words as possible, and you are disobeying the principal. Kyle shook his head. I'm conserving. She said, that's nonsense. Conservation means, and Kyle finished her sentence, not wasting, which is true. When we conserve, we try to use things carefully and not waste materials. Mrs. Marlowe glared at him. Conservation is for energy and water and soil and forests. Words don't need conserving. Maybe they do, Kyle said, which was awfully brave of him. And all the kids in the class nodded their agreement with Kyle which was also very brave. Mrs. Marlowe herself began to get angry. However, she was an extremely logical person, and she had to admit that Kyle had a point. Anybody who had ever eaten lunch in the teacher's room or sat through a whole faculty meeting would have to agree that a lot of words get wasted every school day. And all that endless gabbing that had made the unshushables so famous, 99% waste. But she, saw, but she said, regardless of that, the principal said you must all participate normally in class. Kyle scrunched up his face. What is normal? Mrs. Milo said, in this case, it means talking the way the principal wants you to, the way I want you to, the way everyone usually talks and answers, normally. Kyle said, can normal change? Well, said Mrs. Marlo, and then paused. She paused because just three days ago, they had discussed climate change, and she had explained how a normal high temperature now would have been considered abnormal, or not normal, a hundred years ago, and she knew Kyle would remember that. The whole class probably remembered. This was a very bright group. She continued, yes, you could say that, but it's certainly not normal to use only three words at a time, or no words at all, not in school. Kyle shrugged, works for me. Mrs. Marlowe thought back to all the times in the past week when she'd had to yell at Kyle about his non-stop whispering, about his constant joke-telling, about his never-ending comments on anything and everything that ran through his twitchy little head. And she looked at Kyle, sitting there quietly, giving her his full attention, and every other student was doing the same thing. And suddenly the idea of making these kids talk, actually demanding them, that they should go back to their noisy, self-absorbed chatterbrains, it simply wasn't logical. So, Mrs. Marlowe decided to go ahead with her lesson for the day, and she adjusted herself to the new normal, because the new normal was at least ten times better than the old normal. In social, in, in social studies, there were more oral reports, and Mrs. Overby called on Ed Canner and Bill Harkness to go first. The boys walked to the front of the room, stood shoulder to shoulder, and both of them looked down at the index cards in Bill's hands. Ed said, Italy is old. Then Bill said, The Roman Empire. And Ed said, Ruled the world. And Bill said, For many centuries. So they're going back. And forth. Mrs. Overby said, What do you two boys think you are doing? Ed said, Giving our report. And Bill said, On Italy. No, you're still playing that game, counting the words. 
But we practiced, Ed said. We're ready, Bill said. And Ed said, can we finish? Like the other teachers, up and down the fifth grade hall, Mrs. Overby had made a decision. Go with the flow, which promised to be very quiet and orderly, or call the principal, raise a ruckus, and try to force these kids to do their regular old noisy selves again. As a student of history, Mrs. Overby knew about the power of grassroots movement. She also knew about the power of civil disobedience. But mostly, she decided that this no-talking craze was actually a pretty good social experiment. Plus, she didn't feel like the kids thought they were winning and she was losing. It wasn't like that. They were just having a different kind of communication experience. Together. That's all. True, Ed and Bill's report on Italy was choppy and awkward and a little hard to follow as they passed the narration back and forth like a ping pong ball. But the boys made all their points. Learning took place and the whole class sat quietly and paid close attention. And the next five reports went almost as smoothly. What could a social studies teacher ask for? So, like the other teachers, Mrs. Overby chose the quiet way, and she, di she decided she'd talk to the other teachers later in the morning and see how they were handling this thing. And she'd talk to Mrs. Hyatt, too. That's where we'll have to stop part two of chapter 17, but next time it's Mr. Burton's class. We'll see what he's going to do with the kids. Uh, he's the one who had them make up their silly story. All right, so we'll see what he does with them.